Welcome to Beyond the Sermon podcast, where we hope to stir your faith by pulling truths from the sermons at Believer's Fellowship and discussing them here together. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Sermon. I'm Heather Alligata, your host, and joining us today again is our, is our, I don't know the <laughs> proper is, word our. there, Polk County Education, are my two best friends, Jonathan Alligato, my husband, and Jerry's Hagens. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, Welcome. I'm glad Good you're here. Good to be with you guys. Yes. yes, we had the giggles a little bit. But we're gonna get through it. <laughs> That's good. It'll be fun. <laughs> Serious for business here. Uh, we're doing a uh, topical season, topical um, podcast today on, and this one will be fun because the Vision of Believers Fellowship Church is um, miracle signs and wonders yeah. for 2024 for 2024 believers fellowship and today we're going to talk about how miracles follow jesus yeah and miracles follow us and there's a scripture jonathan help me out because it's mark i think it's mark 16 15 20 mark 16 20 where it says the believer yes well, it's 16, 17, 16, 17 through 20 says, and these signs, these signs shall follow the fivefold ministry. No. no, no, no. Oh, it says these signs shall follow all who believe. Yes. Right. That's Everybody. Big. Yes. All who believe the believer. <laughs> so the prerequisite of signs <laughs> to follow me is my belief yes so hold on wait a minute wait a minute i'm gonna i'm gonna step on somebody's toes don't turn me off don't <laughs> shout me down now so if signs aren't following me do i am i really do believing? i believe jonathan i'm just kidding no that's good cast out devils yeah that's the first sign of a new believer imagine yes. that you come to a church and they say we want you to fill out this census form we want you to become a member of our church the first prerequisite is that you go out and cast out a demon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the second one? Cast out demons, heal the sick. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Raise the dead. Then wow. you can come be part of this church. <laughs> <laughs> no. There, what is it whenever people say, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna, or Jesus said, greater work shall you do? There's a minister that says, well, why don't you just start <laughs> start with the works with the works that Jesus did? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they're like, yeah, greater works. It's like, but Jesus <laughs> healed the sick. He uh, raised the dead. He cleansed the leopard. He cleansed the leopard. He cast out demons. Yep. So those are the ones he did. He says, greater works you shall do. And it's hard for you to come for a month yep. straight. Ah, just, yeah. Jonathan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, there, he's right though. He's right. He, people, he's right. I people, know. people say stuff because it sounds good. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, I want to operate in miracles. I want to flow in miracles. But are you really? Do you understand what you're saying? Do you understand the demand that you're going to have to place on your mind, on your heart, on your emotions, on everything? You're going to have to die to self mm -hmm. to yes. be able to walk in that level of, amen, power. That level of freedom. Yeah. yeah. And it's not us. Right. Is that we're, right? we're not the one healing them. It, there's, there's nothing that we have to muster up. Right. Um, we don't have to like, I mean, y you can by the being led by the, the Lord, but you don't have to pray for two hours before no. you, you pray for someone. You don't have to, you know, read your Bible 10, 10 minutes before you do this. It's just, it's in you. Right. That's the part power of, of God is in you. That's part of relationship. Yeah. Correct. Jesus didn't say, okay, I'm going to work a miracle. I got to charge myself up. Right. He was already charged. And uh, uh, the one with the issue of blood in the passion, it says, whenever she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she tapped into the power that always surged around him. Yep. It was a constant. He was, he, he didn't, even Jesus didn't have to say anything to her. Right. right. He was in such relationship and fellowship with God that God's power just emanated from him. Right. And right. Anybody who touched him was healed. Paul, his clothes, they would take yes. it and they would cut it up. And yep. that would be like the prayer cloth. Isn't Peter's that shadow. Awesome? Peter's, Peter's shadow. shadow. And this is all, you know, we, we, yeah, we want to work miracles. Well, 
I think a greater term would be birth miracles. We want to birth miracles because mm -hmm. miracles are in me. Right. Why? Because Jesus is in me. The spirit of heaven's in me. So I want to go birth a miracle. I want to go birth heaven today. Right. Right. Because when, I, when, you're, when a husband and a wife are intimate, when a bride and his, a groom and his bride are intimate, Things happen. Mm -hmm. Right. So and there's no formula. There's no there's formula. No like, Amen. Um, I like, we talked about Rex in a, another episode a while ago, but he talked about this. He talked about miracles. He talked about testimonies. And he was saying, if I ever write a book that says 10 steps to <laughs> casting out a devil, he's like, just slap me, you know, because there, there's no formula. It's just, it's like counseling someone or helping your friend through a rough time. There's no step it's just being there right. yes. and depending on the lord to tell you what to say at that right time or how to do this or how to do that uh to, to do whatever they need right you're yeah. just a vessel yeah that formula formula takes away relationship yep. yes. so if i have a formula i don't have to spend time with god i don't have to sacrifice yeah exactly i can just input the formula and mm -hmm. i can get these results mm -hmm. But yes. no, that's not that's not the way God wants. Right, because God doesn't want to do formula miracles. He wants to do individual great things in people's lives. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think about Jesus when they brought the woman who was caught in adultery to him. He didn't just spout off instantly with some scripture. What he 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 stepped back. He sat down. Right, remember what Rex was doing and said, "Okay, God, what do you want me to say?" Yeah. What do you yeah. want me to do? What is that evidence of? The evidence is, Lord, I need a word right now to change this situation, but I've already been with you prior to this situation, so I can put a demand on my relationship with you now. Right. Mm -hmm. And to recognize it's not of yourself. Right. Amen. You know, there's there's no pressure. The only the only thing we're to do is just like what you're saying, Jonathan, is just to ask ask the Lord, you know? Yeah. Ask the Lord. Pastor John ministered. He said, Jesus was the express image of God the Father. Hebrews 1, 1 through 4. Mm. God, who at sundry times and in, and in divers manners. Diverse. Diverse, diverse manners. <laughs> <laughs> I love the King James. Divers. He preached out of the King James. So I try to. I try to, you know, be like him. God, who I, I'm going to skip that because we don't need, we're going to go to Hebrews 1 verse 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, mm. whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they." Mm. Jesus, the express image of God, upholding all things. Right. Awesome. That's why whenever uh, the disciples were saying, show us the Father. Yeah. Jesus said, have I been with you so long that you don't realize yet that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? Right, right. If you're looking at me, you're looking at the Father. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the image of my Father. Me standing before you right now, I am that express image. So why he's asking, why do you why are you asking to see the Father? And Jesus is saying, you basically you've already seen him right, in right. me. And that's the same with us. People right. have a problem with that. But Jesus came as an example. Jesus came as a man. Right. I remember Daniel John used to say, and you just read it, mm -hmm. Hebrews thir uh, uh tw what was it, thirteen one? No, no, this is one. Hebrews one. Hebrews one. In sundry times, yep. God revealed himself through the prophets and signs. But now in this time, he has revealed himself through his son. So what is Jesus? Jesus is a sign, a sign of what? Well, he's a sign of many things. But to the, to the believer, Jesus is a sign of what my life should look like. Right. Because he was the firstborn among many brethren. He's the cookie cutter. We're the dough. If my life doesn't look like, sound like, and motivate, and, and, and come from the same perspective as his, mm -hmm. I have to judge myself. Right. 
I have to judge myself. My life needs to look like Jesus's. He was the pattern son. He was the corn of wheat that would fall to the ground and die, but it would bear much fruit. All right, Genesis 1. Every, every, every fruit, every seed produces after its own kind. Right. Jesus was a sign to the <clears throat> new born again believer. Amen. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a child is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, Prince the Everlasting Peace. Father, the Prince of Peace. Mm. Jesus' name is miracle. Pastor said, you were made by God to be like God. Jesus was the express image of God the Father. Jesus' name is miracle, Isaiah, and Isaiah. Miracle surrounded Jesus' life. Miracles surround your life. Miracles surround me. I'm a walking, talking miracles. Miracles to me, right. miracles through me. Hallelujah. And so he was trying to, to kind of drill into us. He was trying to say miracles are, it should be a natural. It should be in a, um, fam, not familiar, like in a bad way, but just right. always a part of your life. Yeah. You, you yes. Know, never... Never surprised, always amazed. Right. I'm never surprised that God, d that a miracle happened through me or came to me, but I'm always amazed yes. because God's, <clears throat> you know, God's yeah. amazing yeah. in, in yeah. itself. We're always like, oh, wow, that's so awesome. But it's so, it should be so normal. Right. No, I was us. sitting in the barbershop this morning thinking about, you know, because I knew we were going to record this morning. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told me, he said, he said, do you know they're only called miracles on earth? Wow. wow. Because in heaven, it's natural. So wait a minute. If, 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 if Christ has given me great and precious promises by which I may partake of the divine nature, and, and, and in heaven, miracles are natural, then what stops me from, from living naturally miraculous? Mm. What stops me? Fear. Yeah. My mind. Fear. Fear. Fear or just... Apathy. Yes, because remember um, the lady at Hobby Lobby... <laughs> I hope she probably doesn't listen. I doubt it, but she was so rude to me. <laughs> she worked there. She was just so rude to me. And, um, she just kind of treated me like I was an idiot. Wow. I'll just say that maybe she didn't mean to, maybe she didn't, but she was just not nice. And so Jonathan says three different, I'm telling Jonathan this, this story because I, who else are you going to tell these stories to, you know? So I'm like, she was so mean to me and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, well, he's like, did you pray for her? And he was being serious. I'm right. like, no. And he, and then I'm telling him some more. He's like, you should have just said, is there anything I can pray for you about? Yeah. You know? And it's, I was like, Jonathan, I'm sorry. No, I wasn't. I was, you know, on the inside internally thinking, <clears throat> you're going to be nice, Heather. You're going to be nice. I was not thinking about how right. can I pray for her? How can I, you know, help her? And but Jonathan thinks that way. And so it's just inspiring. You're inspiring, Jonathan. But it's inspiring to, to it's just a new way of perspective. Right. Um, so if you're listening, I mean, that is just such, that would have changed the whole conversation. Yeah. She treated yeah. me like I was an idiot. I was not being mean to her, of course. I was just like, <sighs> okay, I'm going to just keep, you know, keep asking what I'm asking because I, you know, such is life. Not everybody's nice, you know, <laughs> right, <laughs> such as we right. want them to be. And, um, but I could have, I could have totally just put myself to the side and stopped thinking about how she was treating me and how she was making me feel yes. right. and just totally just said, you know, um, <coughs> I, I, I don't know if you're going through anything today, right. but is there anything I pray for you about before I walk away? I would right. love to pray for you. Like how, how right. selfless. How and isn't that beautiful. heaven the perspective of heaven? Yeah, like you said, when you when you in the in that moment you were focused on why is this woman treating me in this exactly. way? Exactly. I don't deserve this. I haven't done anything to her right. for her to treat me like this. Mm -hmm. And again, you see that the focus is on self. Exactly. And I think about in the Bible it says it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. I think I've used this analogy before. But when a baby fox bites on the vine its teeth are not sharp enough to sever the vine mm. it only damages it 
And so now all the energy and effort that went into producing fruit mm. is now the vine is focused on healing itself. Mm. So at the end of that vine, there's grapes. But now all the nutrients is I'm being wounded. hung up at that wound. It's being like, before I can produce this, I got to deal with this. Yeah. Mm. I got to deal with me. I got to th- th- this right here. And so when, you, when we get focused on self, it's miracles hard. Stop to, yeah, it's hard to flow in miracles because you're like taking care of yourself. Yeah, Come exactly. on. You can't produce it in yourself. It's when you think when I think like Jesus said, I'm not I'm not dying for for me. I'm not doing this for me. I'm not thinking about the scourging. I'm not thinking about my beard being ripped. I'm not thinking about the crown of thorns being pushed on my head for people who will never accept Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Right. There are people who have died and gone to hell, mm-hmm. but Jesus still did it because he wasn't focused on self. Correct. Why? Because he was Jesus? No, because he was love. Right. And love takes no account of a wrong done to itself. The only way that the supernatural can flow through a Christian's life is when they truly have the perspective of heaven. And the heaven, the, the perspective of heaven is... Jesus said it five times that I've found so far. If any man come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. If anyone's not willing to leave their mother, father, children's houses, homes, lands for me and my sake, they're not worthy of me. Uh, uh, Unless a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. I mean, so many times you see Jesus have this one mindset Remember he said in, in, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 30, or 29 through 30, 28 through 30, he's telling the disciples, is anybody thirsty? Are you burnt out on yeah. religion? Are yeah. you burnt out on religion? I'm asking you, are you burnt out on religion? Religion sucks. He said, come unto me and I'll give you rest. Yeah. Rest where? In my soul. And then he says, learn of me. For I am mighty, powerful God. Is that what he said? No. No. He said, I am meek and lowly of heart. Because when you understand that, Rex Henry said it this way. You just simply got to learn to get out the way. (laughs) Yes. You get out of the way. Right? And when you get out of the way and you realize that, wait a minute, I'm just a vessel for you, God. Right. I was bought at a price. I'm not living my life for me anymore. So, so this lady in, in Hobby Lobby, right? And you said, ma'am, are you having a bad day? No, I probably should. Can I, can I my pray for you? <laughs> but yeah. And yeah. she bites your head off, right? And then you get persecuted for what? For doing wrong? Hmm. For righteousness sake. Right. Wow. That's what you're called to. That's what we're called to. But see, we don't want to embrace that because it's uncomfortable to this old flesh bag. Right. Mm. Was I right? Was it Matthew eleven twenty eight, or you turned to a different scripture? I know I was turning, no, but I thought it. you it's, said Matthew twenty eight. It's Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty, where okay. Jesus talks about that. Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty, where he says, "Come unto me, all who are heavy laden." In the Amplified, it says, or it might be a different translation, but uh, burdened by religion. Mm. Yep. It's in the message. Uh, uh, burdened by a formula. Mm. Burdened yep. by a certain way of doing things. Yep. That produce no results. Come on. No fruit. That's the burden of it. Like you're doing all of these like things. Like a hamster in a wheel. Yeah, but it's producing no. So you put all this energy and effort mm-hmm. and you're getting nothing but tired. Yeah. Jesus say, no, nah, come to me and let me show you a different way. Yeah, he said, Learn the unforced rhythms of my grace. Mm. That's good. Is is that the same scripture? Yep. I think it's in the message translation or it might be the passion, but it says, come to me and learn the unforced rhythm of grace. It's just relationship. Just being with him. I love that. The rhythm of grace. Yeah. It's just, why? Because it's in you. It's in you. You may not know it out there, but it's in you. Heaven's in you. Miracles are in you. You've got to come to this place where you die. You just flat out die to your motivation for life and living. You're not offended by people. You're not fearful of people because you understand that, that 
I'm living my life for God. Yeah. You don't need people to reassure you. Right. You don't right. need people to tell you you're doing a good job. You don't need people to respond a certain way <clears throat> when you yeah. ask if you can pray That's for them. That's a tough one. Yeah. I'm, I'm learning. I'm still learning that because you just, you know, especially, you know, working at the church, I think for me, I'm around like-minded people yeah you're around like-minded people it's easy to to represent the lord right. because people kind of expect it from you it's just easy but i remember working in a secular job and and you are weird i would eat by myself all the time you know i'd be totally fine with it but right. i mean right. you just it's hard it was very difficult for me to make a friend or to enjoy a conversation because you know when i would venture out i would say yeah, yeah. but i'd venture out and i would be like <clears throat> thinking oh my gosh i never want to talk to this person again because they're you know perverse talk or just talking yep. about such things that i didn't like um that you know that hurt my spirit right mm -hmm. um so you had to be weird and say well i don't I don't believe in that. Uh, this is how I, you know, without being judgmental, right. it's, there's such a tactful way of doing it. Yeah. That's, there's a rhythm to grace, to speak to people, to be Jesus. I love that. Yeah. That's so good. Pastor John said something in this, um, in this particular sermon, he was reading in Galatians and Paul, Paul basically was like, Hey, you guys started off great. <laughs> yeah. somebody yeah. snuck in amongst you and yeah. convinced you yeah, that yeah. these miracles that are popping off are done by the works of the law. He says, is a guy that's doing the miracles, does he do it because he keeps the law? Mm. No, he does it through the, through the hearing of faith. It's by faith. That's right. And, and I wrote down, it says, the miracles come by faith, which works through love. Mm. Who, whose love? The father's love, love in for us. who? For that person that right. needs you yeah. to be the conduit because they don't have a direct connection to heaven. That person on your job, that person at the gas station, at the grocery store, they need heaven, but they don't have the access and the connection that you do. Right. Mm -hmm. So how selfish of me. Mm -hmm. Ooh, man, we don't like that word in the church today. How selfish of me to see their need knowing that I have full access to eternity. You know, not only people at the grocery store or at the the gas station, but people in your home. Yeah, yeah. Your wife, your husband, <clears throat> your children, your mom, your dad. Yes. I mean, we are to be the same person at home as we are at the gas Amen. station. Amen. Because whenever, you know, your kids or your spouse are going through something, we, we are to look at them as... A person and with compassion and just say, you know, wh whatever the Lord would right. have you say. So I just wanted to throw that out there because some yeah. people are, are, you know, maybe they're not selfish, but maybe they spend so much time on other people. They forget like, right. hey, you, your family needs, you know, comfort your yeah. family, comfort each other. Your family is your first ministry. Yes, yes. exactly. That, and because God even said in the word, like, a man who don't even have his house in order, how can mm -hmm. he be over the affairs of the church? It's Timothy. Yeah. And a man that doesn't take care of his own, he's, he's worse than an unbeliever. Right. Yeah. So I must first exhibit the characteristics of a godly person mm -hmm. to my family, to my wife, to my children. Right. So they're not seeing two different people. That's right. Come on. That's right. And like, man, my dad is one way. One, At church. And, but then when we come home, it's like, Come on, I bro. Even, I don't even know who he Come is. On. A different person. Man, that's so pure. That's so real. Like so, just man. I I desire that above anything. Right. Just to like to 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 you know to be the same guy wherever right. I am. I don't know how to not be okay. Right. Well, it's real. It's real. You can really be yourself. You can stay in that place of humility. Um, you know, out of that that prideful of trying to be something that you're not. If right. you're just like, this is who I am everywhere. I am. I'm a real person. Um, you know, so anyways, I just wanted to throw that out there. Cause you know, I, I don't think people say that enough. Right. You know, people, sometimes people's home life is so hard yeah. and they enjoy being out of their home more than they're in their home. Right. Yes. And it and shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that way. And yeah. we've, we all have those moments. I don't think anyone's exempt from that. But um, 
you know, my, for me personally, just in my opinion, my home life, uh, and Jonathan knows this, if I feel in any way that I'm slacking as a mom or I'm not doing something um, that I should be doing, maybe, I don't mean like I'm sinning or anything. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not like saying I'm sinning at my house. <laughs> I just mean like, you know, you have certain goals in your home. You have a certain way you want to um, minister to your children or minister to your your house. You you right. know, as a mom, I'm a woman. Yeah. So as a mom, as a wife, if I'm not, if I don't feel like I'm doing that, I will cancel all my plans. I'll just, I will. Whatever plans I have that week, I'll cancel them all. And I'll say, I'm sorry, I can't come out. Because I just, my home is my first ministry, right. like you're saying, Jarius. It is so important to me. I have a commission from the Lord yeah. to raise my children godly, to be a godly wife, to be a godly mom, to do what he told me to do in my home because we're all made uniquely and to be um, everything I'm supposed to be there first. Right. Right. I can't I can't go out into the gas station and to the Hobby Lobby <laughs> and, and, you know, and minister from just a pureness if I don't have that right first. Right. It's, yeah. it's tough for me personally. But anyways... Um, miracles surround your life. Miracles surround our life. We talked about greater works. Miracles surround the church. Mm. In the church, Mark 16, 20. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. In verse 29, 16, 29, it says, Miracles are recorded in the book of Acts. The New Testament church was surrounded with miracles. And then again, miracles to them, miracles through them. So th this is the example of they went out and they preached. Right. And then what happened? God confirmed what they were God preaching. Worked with his, yeah. And I think about whatever Pastor John said, that this was going to be a strong spiritual year, a year of demonstration. Yes. Then where is the demonstration going to come in? It's going to be through the church, through the mm -hmm. body, through us. Yes. So there's going to be a strong spiritual year, meaning we're going to get strong spiritually. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a demonstration. That means God's going to demonstrate through us, his body, the church. Yeah. That that the reason that that word came is like God saying, I want to do something through my through my through my body. I want to I want to achieve this. I want my will to come to earth through them. Yeah, I'm, I just popped in my this thought. Remember, remember, in you know, back in the day, you had the vacuum salesman, uh, and he'd show up at your house with his briefcase. But in this briefcase, he's got everything that he needs to do to do what a demonstration. Yeah, that's but right. where does he do his demonstration? Notice he doesn't do his demonstration at the vacuum factory. Right. The church doesn't demonstrate. Oh, come on. In the church. Right. Where does the church demonstrate the power of God? Okay. In the world. I was thinking the same exact thing when he was, when Jarius was saying that. It, the demonstration. After reading this, it says, and they went out. They went out. There's a key. They, they went, went out. out. They went and out. preached everywhere. The Lord working with them, confirming the word through the company sides. Wouldn't that be, because we're thinking, we read the vision and we think right. here at church. Right. Right. But you know what? It, I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What? If it's all of us, like you're, like you're saying, Jerry. Exactly. It's, it's been happening here. The Spirit yes. of God has been moving in our services. And I think he's doing it to say, hey. It's time. It's time. See? This is how it works. Yeah. Go out there. Go. And the Lord, in other translation, it says, and the Lord co-labored with them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. I wrote a note here. It says he wants humility, not ability. Mm. This is what Paul says in first Corinthians chapter two. He says, when I first came to you, dear brothers, I didn't use lofty words or impressive wisdom right. to tell you about God's plan. For I decided that while I was with you, that I would forget everything except for Jesus, mm. the one who was crucified. Listen to this. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling. And my message, whoo, my preaching were very plain. They didn't have any like right, right. pizzazz, 
rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit so that you might not trust in my wisdom, (laughs) but in the demonstration of God's power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I think about whenever... If Jesus, if miracles going to follow Jesus and miracles going to follow me, it's because I'm following Jesus. Mm-hmm. For me to operate in miracle signs and wonders, I must be connected to the one that's my source of my power. That's why Jesus said in first John or John chapter 15, verses one through seven, that whole thing is talking about yep. abiding in him. Let me, you know what? Let me apart right from quick. me. He says. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he proves the branches that do bear fruit. So I want you to notice something. Either way, you getting cut. <laughs> either way. Yeah, you, you, get, you getting, cut. Avoid getting cut. So you be either being cut off because you're not producing fruit or, or you getting cut because you are producing fruit. So come either on. way, you're going underneath the you scaffold. You're either being pruned or you're <laughs> being yeah, yeah. burned. And he pr- proves the branches that do produce fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message that I have given you. Remain in me. See, that's that remain. That's that repetition. Mm. Yes. Be in me constantly. Be in constant fellowship with me and I will be and I will remain in you for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is not in the vine. Amen. Amen. If I'm not in constant fellowship with God, I'm disconnected from the power source yeah. by which through a miracle can be worked. Right. I don't know what you're right. doing. So, exactly. so the branch, is the branch dependent on its own power no. to produce that fruit? So why are we so dependent and why do, we, why do we determine God's ability according to our own? Mm. When it comes to doing miraculous and seeing signs and wonders, I know what happens because I've been there. When we see that person in the grocery store or... Our, our children or our wife, mm-hmm. we go, we have a thought, an inclination. I'm going to pray for them. And instantly right behind it is. Don't do that. Doubt, yeah. fear, what unbelief. If what if, Isn't what if, that, that crazy? What if, what if, what if, what if, because yeah. you see two things working here. You see heaven and you see earth. Right. Heaven comprehends miraculous. Earth can't. Right. So you have to basically tell your. You're, you're, if you're not watching, which most people listen to the podcast, but Jonathan's hitting his body saying earth because that's flesh. the flesh. So you, so what I'm hearing, if I'm, cause I'm applying to scripture to what you're saying, cause scripture says that we are slaves to righteous living. Correct. We're slaves to the spirit. If we're going to let. Well, the Bible says that you're slaves to whomever you obey. So we want our, we want to sh- tell our flesh, shut up. Right. I had someone say to me, I want to go out evangelizing, but every time I go, something comes up, which is so normal. That's just life, right? right? And they're like, man, but they don't like it. Who said that? Someone. (laughs) Someone said that. Uh, And (laughs) we're live. No, I'm just kidding. Um, But someone said that. And instantly, I remember something the Lord taught me. Treat it like a job. It's not a, it's not a job. Like it's not I'm a not, duty. I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying treat it like a, like a duty, like a red tape. I'm right, saying right. to make it, if it's not important, you can make it important. Right. Come on. Yeah. That's right. You can, you can say to yourself, this is, this is my job because you would go to your job. Yeah. If something came up, I'm sorry, I have to work. Um, yep. if you don't feel good, well, I don't have a fever. I'll, I'll I'm going to, I'll, I'll be okay. Yes. You go yeah. to work. You know, you're having trouble in your, in your marriage or your, your home life, your, your son's skipping school, but you still got to go to work. You got to go to work. You have it. You have to be there at a certain time. You have to do certain things and then you leave. So I just said, just treat it like a job. Yep. Treat it like this is my job. Nothing comes before it. I got to do this. It's even greater than your job. It's your life. Well, yes, yes. But sometimes we get so in our, in our. I mean, I hate to say it, but just it's just it. the truth. Sometimes it's just not important. Right. We're selfish. We're just so. That's right. Maybe grocery shopping becomes more important than going out evangelizing, you know, with the team. Or maybe I can't stop and talk to this person because I have other things to do today. You know, it, whatever it is. I don't know what what thought comes to you. Um, 
But instead, think of it like, I got to do this because this is my job. Right. Yeah. Think, I think, you know what motivates me when I'm out somewhere, just, you know, whenever, wherever, wherever you are, wherever we are as believers, we should be, we have this agenda. We have this motive, right? I'm here to get popcorn and toilet paper. Yeah. But heaven's in me mm-hmm. and I'm looking. And when I open my heart, and I've got, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm love. He's in me. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, naturally things, every single day you're going to have opportunity right. to unleash heaven. Every day. Yeah. Every well, single day. The more day. you do it, the more natural it is. Right. But right. just like to get started to just say, this is what I'm, I'm called to do. I mean, you can spiritualize it if you want to not think of it like a job. This is what I'm called to do. I'm going to do it and just make a point, make some goals, make some, uh, you know, make yourself step out. Make you, you're make never yourself. going to change if you don't feel the uncomfortableness. Right. Yeah. You're never going to come to a new level if you're never uncomfortable right. and people want to stay in their comfort zone. You've got, if, if you're burning on the inside saying, I've got, I want to lay hands on people. I want to pray for people. I want it to be natural. You have to step out. You have <laughs> yes. to come be on. uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> um, you have to let your heart beat out of your chest and fall on the ground. You know, it's not as, and then when you, every time, Every time after you do it, you're like, that wasn't bad at all. It's right. never bad. It's right. never even bad when they reject you. I mean, right. it's Correct. never as bad as you you make it out the seam. Right. That's right. So, That's right. Anyways, we are over time. Um, but I, I just want to challenge everyone, you know, when you go out, every day when you go out, purpose, you know, put a note somewhere in your car or on your phone, put a note somewhere, something that will remind you that, God loves people. And because God loves people, I love people because God lives inside of me. And I'm not going to go one day without making someone smile or without saying something, just something, just start wherever you are and just do it. Be uncomfortable and then it will become natural. And you won't have that, that feeling of, oh man, I can't do this or, oh man, I'm scared or, oh man, every time just kill it. You know what? Run toward the roar run toward it. You are victorious. You are an overcomer. Don't let anything diminish you or make you feel like you can't do something. If there's something that, that is a uh, hindrance or there's something that, that makes you feel like less than I'd say, you know what? Smack the devil in the teeth, kick (laughs) his feet down and say, I'm not going to let this rule over me anymore. I'm going to conquer this fear and I'm going to go out and do what the word says. And I'm going to see signs and I'm going to see wonders and I'm going to see miracles come to me and I'm going to see miracles come through me. I will not die and leave this earth without seeing that. I will not go to heaven and and be like, man, I wish I would have. No, don't do that. Go and run toward the roar. Be who God has called you to be. Amen. Amen. So as Pastor John says, stay sturdy. Thank you.